a package showed up the other day. It's right there. But I don't want to talk about that one yet. I'm going to do that one next video. So make sure you're liked and subscribed. And uh, that one's going to be a cool tool. But for now, I want to show you this cool tool that was in the box with that. Now, when you use the Link Runner AT, which is in this bag, which I've been using for the last maybe a couple weeks, really like using it. It's got some really cool features. I'm going to turn it on so we can get ready here and show you. There's a feature in here called iPerf. Now I was thinking to myself, I have an iPerf server. I was playing with it and I'll show you guys that and record it and show you. And I thought to myself, I wonder how I can make my own iPerf server. So I started Googling and I accidentally fell onto the NetAlley website and they actually make their own iPerf handheld little server. It's in here. I opened it to look at it. It's really cool. It's tiny. It's about the same size as the Link Sprinter, but it's actually a little mini iPerf server. So today I'm going to add it to the cloud uh, website and we're going to try it. But before that, I'm going to take these batteries out because it comes with two batteries. I'm going to show you guys iPerf running on this tool on my home and then we'll try that one right there. Now on mine I have a full 10 gig network but this device won't go up to 10 gig. I get maybe about 800 to 900 which is fine because we're just trying to test bandwidth to make sure that the lines and stuff like that are perfect. I want to see what this one can do and then go from there. So let's see if we can remote into this. It should be online see activity it's going there should be able to hop on to my uh, link live site here and remote into it and then show you guys let's see here devices units and yep there it is let's go remote we'll click remote and it's going to establish its connection okay I'm going to prop this up so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. You won't be able to see fully, but you'll see that I'm moving the mouse around. I'm going to run iPerf right here. I have my server set up in here. We have 182.168.80.50, and we should be able to connect to my server and do a quick test. I have to be on the right network. There's my mistake. <laughs> my iPerf server is not on the bottom network. That was funny. <laughs> I, I should have known by looking at the IP address that wasn't correct. Let's see here. We'll wait a couple more seconds. Let's actually launch it and make sure that it's online. Duh! Can't believe I did that. That's hilarious. Now let's see what happens. Let's actually try it. Will it work? Oh, I pushed stop. I touched it too many times. There we go. Aha! It does work. Cool. So it's doing its session now that we're connected to my proper network not the wrong one we can see that it does 861 there we go we get 690 okay that's fair that works that's pretty uh accurate i wonder what it's gonna be like to add this now we have some instructions here i'm gonna close this session so we can see the screen after going to the site we can find that the tool is on here which is right here, this guy, test accessory. Pocket iPerf testing tool. This portable tool allows you to protectively validate network performance. Uh, operates as a complete iPerf testing server, so standalone by itself. Does TCP and UDP, packet loss and jitter. User-friendly interface, that's pretty sweet because I don't see anything on here, no screen or anything, so must be pretty simple. Um, provides simple network port tests, PoE, link, DNS, DHCP, gateway, and intranet. Okay, so what are the instructions say here? Let's see if we can go documents, product selection, manuals, user guide. I haven't set mine up, so I'm going to do that with you guys here. So it says how it all works. Link live, adding it to the account. Anything special that I need to do right away? No? Okay, so the first thing we need to do 
is insert two batteries. Okay, that's pretty easy. Oh, and I see that there's a MAC address on here, so we're gonna have to get that. So what do we got? These two are backwards, that way and that way. Okay, done. Ensure that you have an ethernet cable connected to an active network with the access to the internet. Okay, I'm gonna plug it into the other proper network, the same one this is on here, just in case we have to be on the exact same network. So, I have a cable here. It's not gonna be long enough, so let me see if I have my green cable in my bag here. Yep, I do. Oh, with a fiber cable. I'll plug that in so we can see it here. Plugging into my Grandstream 2.5 gig PoE switch. Now, I believe it says somewhere here, if there's no batteries in here, if PoE is available on your network connection, the unit starts up automatically. If you're using two batteries only, press and hold the power button for two seconds and turn on the unit. Well, let's see what happens if I just plug it in. It's probably gonna turn on, right? Yep, there it goes. Okay, I'll leave this here. Okay. And we'll let's see what that does. Hopefully you guys can see some lights. As soon as the power on that test accessory, all of the LED symbols eliminate yellow for 15 seconds. Well, it did that. Then the accessory attempts to connect to your network, lighting up each LED with the corresponding connection steps. Okay, well right now it says it's got power because it's got PoE. Oh, there we go, it's doing a link. And then it'll do DHCP. I'm reading it upside down, sorry. And then, I don't know what the other two icons are, but I'll see in the manual here, because they read them out here. What are those icons? We got, okay, so we got power on the bottom. I'm holding it upside down. Then we have the link light. So we got link, DHCP. What's the one above that? Gateway. Ah, okay, so we can actually see the gateway on the network. And the next one is... Link Life Cloud. So it's probably not added to my cloud, so that's why it's yellow. But we're going to add that here, so give me a second here. Just want to make sure here. Then it says, once you connect Link Live, the test accessory may automatically update with latest software. Okay, well, we'll try that. We'll go like this, and we'll go down here in the bottom corner. There's a little button. We'll click this. And we have to click Test Accessory, which is this guy down here. So then it says... We need the MAC address on the bottom. I wonder if that's on the box. Is that on the box too? No, I don't, I don't think that's the right same one. No. Bummer. Well, that would have been cool if it was on the box because I could see it easier. But oh well. So what do we got? Last digits. Okay, so 17. Okay, it says it's doing something. Looks like we got a little strappy thing here as this is doing its thing. My hand, like I said, it might do firmware. I'm doing this for you guys. I have never touched it or done anything, so we'll see what the, our experience is here. I can't believe I forgot to plug that in the right network. What a goober. Oh, well, oh, hey, that went green. Claim unit. Cla oh, it says I can name it Jason's, can I? Oh, I'll just leave it as Jason's test. Oh, actually, I'm going to call this Jason's portable iperf server ha because i can name that that's pretty sweet done how do we use this now link live account blah 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 detailed behavior viewing the connection test results behavior okay so hmm okay so there's a couple ways of doing this this field lets you to enter the port Standard 5201, WWW test, proxy configuration, debug. Okay, powering off the unit. I don't really see anywhere how to test. So these give us all the test settings. First time you sign in, that doesn't really do anything. Well, let's try by the IP address. But I also remember seeing somewhere on here, wait a second. How it works. Um, I'm skimming this quickly because I've never done it. So I'm going to find the answer quickly here, but I'm failing at that. We got it claimed. Detailed behavior. 
This unit requires IP, it's all online. Test accessory, communicate with this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, hmm. I don't know. What happens if the IP address changes and stuff like that? I wonder if we can find it on the uh, scanner tool here. So let's go back to, I'm going to show you guys the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's go to this guy, remote. Okay, now you'll be able to see it, hopefully. And, okay, so let's go back to here. Let's go discovery. This is still plugged in. And let's see here. Do we see our device in here? Maybe it should come up with my IP address and the name of the device. Ah, there it is. Oh, no, that's my link runner. Never mind. One more. Well, there's the tool. But the name hasn't changed. Maybe I have to go clear. Let's go refresh discovery. Because we did change the uh, name of the device. Let's go refresh. Oh, I should have gone went clear. So let's go refresh. Clear and rerun discovery. That'll help. Okay, so we see my link runner. It's in there. Uh, let's see here. There's Jason's link runner. I see the iperf server but i don't see its name maybe that name will change after it does an update or something i'll report back to the later on that but there's the ip address we see the device so the reason why i wanted to see that is if i go to another network the ip address on this is going to change and how are we going to find that but we can see because there's an icon on here that shows what it is so technically we should be able to take this ip address and then run the iperf server server and see what it does so 183 so let's go like this now i like to close all the apps just in case and we'll relaunch iperf and then what we have to do is click the wheel we have to change the address and what did i say it was 183 183 oh look at that huh Cool, it already found it. Okay, well that's kind of cool. I'll have to try that on a different network and see what that does by plugging it in. We'll do a follow-up video later on. But there it is. So let's click on it, and it puts it in. Okay. Save. Um, I'm going to try this as... I was going to save it as lab. I won't give it a name. So then we'll go back, and let's try and see what it does. Start. Initializing. Hey, cool. It's actually working. That's pretty sweet. I see we get... That's pretty fucking cool. I like that. I wonder what it's going to be like to try that on site. I like that. Portable iPerf server or something that's just a little bit bigger than two AA batteries. Nice. Now, just so you guys know, I, as this is running, went out and bought a couple of these cases. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into here with this in there and I'm going to call this a grab and go toolkit that I'm going to be using for a while here because I got other accessories as this is still running. I got a couple things. I got my trusty green book that I've been really using and it's got notes in there and stuff. Thank you for that book by the way. I got a fiber cable multi-mode and what else do I have in here? There's a power adapter in there, but it's USB-C, so I just use my laptop one because I just carry one of these little brick things that has all the ports on it and stuff. Got a pen and a... Oh, oh, I didn't lose it. That's good. I got a nice bright flashlight. Look at this. So I could see things. I was in a network room the other day and I couldn't see a cable, so I had to use that. And, of course, I have whole bunch of these wire mapping dongles that's going to go in that kit along with it. Now they also sent me a, oh, where did that go? Oh, I haven't transferred over here. It's in the other, it's in the other bag because I got a couple of these bags. I have a SFP module that's multi-mode, but it does one gig and 10 gig. Didn't know they made those, but that'll go in my kit. So now we have the iPerf server 
done and working, we get almost a symmetrical connection. We get throughput up is 546 megabits and 572, just a little bit differently there. Now, I'm, I believe in this manual or on their website, I'll close this because we're done, we see capabilities. It does all those things we're talking about, but the specifications here, we should get, where was that? Right there. 550 megabits upload and download symmetrical and it's pretty much what we just got this one was a little bit more for the um, upload download sorry 572 but that will depend on the switches too and you'll want to plug this into a one gig or higher switch this ports only one gig but this guy does 10 gig plus sfp which is one gig too so that was pretty cool, little tiny video. So now I'm gonna be able to put this in my tool kit that's down there when I get it all cut out and stuff like that, and then bring it on site to show. But I thought it would be kind of cool to show you guys my experience taking it out of the box and adding it to the Link Live account and uh, testing it. And it looks like it works pretty good. Now, before I end the video, what I'm gonna try, so I'm gonna unplug this. I wanna know what happens if I take the batteries out of this? Tap them out. Oh, I don't have any fingernails, so let's see what this does. If I don't have any batteries in there, does it still work? Oh, it does too. So if you don't have any batteries, but you have a PoE switch, this device will still work. Cause I got the batteries right here. Oh, and I know somebody might say, oh, you, you might've put batteries in there. Nope, no batteries. It's empty, but I will put this guy on here soon, wherever it goes. Oh, it looks like it goes on the corner. So quick little video, easy little video, but I thought it was going to be cool for you guys to see me connect this and uh, get it going without rehearsing or trying the device before I actually added it to my Link Live account. Now. Hopefully you guys are liked and subscribed because what's in this bag is a little bit better than that guy in a way. This one does one thing, this one does another thing. This tool will work with that one, which will be in that kit, and whatever's in this bag will be going with another tool. So, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm still learning this product. It still has lots of more things that I'm gonna cover. Um, I have lots of cool little ideas, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, questions? Let me know. Talk to you guys later.